One of the most common questions I get asked when consulting with a patient regarding their scoliosis treatment is scoliosis bracing. And you know, scoliosis bracing actually has a long history in the treatment of scoliosis and it's actually become a big controversy actually. And when we look at scoliosis bracing, we have like these two groups. We have believers versus non-believers. And I actually initially was a non-believer when it came to scoliosis bracing because the only type of bracing that existed out there was something we call traditional bracing. Traditional bracing, ultimately the goal is really one thing, and it's try to stop curves from progressing in a very select number of patients. These would be kids um, that are highly, uh, highly progressive kids. That means they're growing, they're, and then they fall into a very small category uh, of diagnosis. They have, gotta have a moderate curve between 20 to 40 degrees or so. They gotta be still growing, not hit puberty yet, and they're just trying to squeeze the spine and hold it. So it was a very select number uh, of patients that could actually fit into or be prescribed a brace. And the reason why we were so against these braces is because they squeezed. And when you squeeze, you cause atrophy in muscle, which is weakness into the muscles, and that would create problems. And we knew as, a, as a, being an alternative doctor to scoliosis treatment, that our goal was to strengthen the spine, to make the spine stronger, to make the spine more resistant, and to try to make the spine more functional, so therefore it doesn't progress during these rapid phases. But I would sell some data that said scoliosis bracing could possibly be effective in reducing or stabilizing scoliosis mostly out of Europe. So I started experimenting. I started trying with braces and I started using some traditional braces like Boston braces. And I started recommending some patients to, hey, let's try using a, a, a brace with the treatment that we were doing here, you know, with our Clear Institute method and our rehabilitative process and our traction and our body weighting and all the things that we do here in our clinic. And I saw complete failure. I almost saw almost all my patients progress as a result of using these braces. I was getting better results not using a brace at all. And I was going, well, what are these studies saying? Because they were saying they were actually getting results. And when I started diving down deeper into understanding the nuances of braces is that I understood one thing, not all braces are the same. And that's the bottom line. The brace is only as good as the person who designs it. So just because it call, it's called a Boston brace or called a Charleston brace or called whatever brace it's called, the bottom line is that the way the brace is designed will deliver the result. So a good design brace will deliver a good result where a bad design brace would deliver a bad result. So when we look at braces, we expand the use of bracing because we design good braces. We design braces that are gonna actually not to squeeze the spine, but actually correct the spine. A corrective brace pushes into the curve and it normally will match the rehabilitation and exercise program that you're prescribed. So it's a complementary program. With the corrective style brace, now we can use bracing in a much wider scale of patient not just limited to a adolescent that's growing with a moderate scoliosis because we're just trying to hold it, but we can actually use it as a corrective device to take curves that are larger and bring them down into that smaller curve. So in adolescence, we can use these braces to help reduce the curve, to make a surgical curve non-surgical, and also to reduce a curve that's in this moderate stage into a mild stage. And in addition, because the corrective brace is being so effective in actually reducing the scoliosis, it greatly improves posture and function. Now, I know what you're saying is a brace is a brace. Is not going to cause some atrophy? Funny enough is that's not true because when we push on the spine, we create a completely different reaction in the body. When you push, your body pushes back and it creates actually muscle strength, not just actually weakness. So what we notice is the actually opposite thing occurs. We don't see weakness. We don't see weakness occurring in the body. We actually see strength building, but only in a good design brace. With these corrective braces, we can also expand use into adult stage where traditional braces don't do anything for an adult. An adult, adult case wearing a brace, you would have to wear the brace literally forever to try to hold them in. And that's just something that's not realistic. But with an adult case, since we're using these as a corrective manner, we can have a adult case wear a brace short term for a long, for a, a full time to get a quick reduction in the curvature and then wean them down and they get the benefit of the corrective brace. And they can also use the corrective brace not only to help them reduce the curve, but since it's reducing the curve, it helps them greatly with their pain levels. So they don't need the high, the high demand for medications or even possible future surgeries. So the bottom line is that a well corrective brace built well can not only be used to reduce a scoliosis, it can be reduced to improve the posture and function, can be reduced in an adult patient to make them not only reduce their curve and make them feel better, and it can be used in combination with therapy and rehab, where traditional braces have very limited use and very limited effectiveness in, a, in managing a scoliosis case in any stage.
Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.